Medjay of Fayum here and I'm here today with a brand new episode of Crusader Kings 3. Thank you so 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 much to Paradox for gifting me a review copy of this game and I am really really looking forward to playing this and all I can say so far is is that I've basically flopped at this game. You know, it's a process of trial and error but hopefully I'll get in. You know, I'll get into this game but Let's just have a look. So let's have a look at a new game. We'll go for 867. If there's any ruler, for example. This, these are the types of factions that I would want to play. Well, I'd love to play an Indian faction, especially the Cholas around here. Or the Pandya Raj over here. Or the Pratira Raj, Pala Raj. Mostly around India I'd love to play. But the Mongols aren't that bad either. I'd also love to play the Abbasids or the Tulun, Tulunid Sultanate. There's a lot of factions to go around, but, you know, I am playing with a few mods, but I can't remember which one. But I am playing with the Sunset Invasion mod, that I'm definitely playing with. Uh, but, no. You know, really, to be honest, I need to figure out the tutorial. I want to figure out how the game works, how the game runs. And this will just be me doing a sort of let's play series on the tutorials. And once I've done the tutorials, then I can do... Oh, I may do a side-by-side -side and easier faction to play with. You know, we'll have to wait and see. Let's have a look. Let's play the tutorial. So, Crusader Kings 3 is a deep strategy game of dynasties and intrigue. If you are new to the world of Crusader Kings, we strongly recommend you play the tutorial, of course. That's pretty much guaranteed. And I play, and I play Pretty King, Merchard. Is it Merchard? I might be right or wrong. A ruler in Ireland. Lead your family and dynasty and defeat your enemies and become king of Ireland. So let's play the tutorial. Okay. So you are a medieval ruler. Land is yours for the taking through clever marriages and diplomacy. All by way of the sword. Alright, so in Crusader Kings there is really no way to win. Yeah, only different ways to enjoy the story that will unfold during the course of this campaign. Alright, so let's use WW A S D. Okay, let's have a look. So this is how much I can plan from here. And let's do the home key. So this is the home key. This is our realm basically. To zoom in and out, use the scroll wheel. Where's our realm capital? So the realm capital is a Holden. So it's the central settlement of a barony or a county capital, and I'm, I know this is basically the boring part. But look, if you're gonna uh, if you're gonna play games like these, you have to engage in the boring parts as well. So taxes and levies to its holders, depending on its holders. So there are three types of holdings: castles, cities, and temples. So we pretty much have a castle at this point. Each build, okay. Each building, each type allows a different type. So each type allows different types of buildings. A ruler. And a government. So rules government from a form to determine what kind of laws they have access to as well as, as well as what obligations they have to their liege if they are not independent. So we have feudal, tribal, clan, theocracy and republic. So we're mostly feudal at this point. Okay, doctrines could be considered religious laws that determine what is acceptable behavior within a faith. And you know the faith you can pretty much determine at that point. We're not going to go on fame just yet. So the political map gives a comprehensive overview of rulers in an area and is ideal for planning wars, managing vassals and exploring realms. So a realm is all the land that a ruler controls either directly or through vassals in contrast to a domain which is the only holdings personally owned by a ruler. So that will be, this is our holding altogether, and this is our realm basically all together mostly and we control Munster and the paper map. So the paper map gives you a top level of all the independent realms. So this is the paper map all together. Okay, so the next one. The Lady King spans over hundreds of years and many generations. Right now the time is standing still because the game is paused. Okay. Sometimes you will see highlighted text like this. This means you can hover your cursor over the words for some information. Okay, yes I'm playing, yep. Okay, and I know the duchy, the barony, the holding, so I've done pretty much this. 
and I'll constantly refer to it as I keep playing. Now let's talk about the game. Everything takes place on the map before you. The world consists of large and small pieces of land, each belonging to someone based on their titles. Your titles are represented by icons. So this is our title and there's the icon around here. So our title is the Feudal Duchy Rank Realm. The ruler is me and the military strength is 612 soldiers. And the succession law is male preference, that is a confederate partition. So on the confederate partition, your titles will be divided equally be between your children. I think the Anglo-Saxons used to have this uh, series of succession as well. So upon succession, all titles held by the late ruler will be divided amongst the eligible children, which is here, are by law allowed to inherit their parents' titles. Bastards are not considered eligible, as well as children of certain genders, among specific gender laws. And the player here is a character that will inherit my throne. Okay, so the player here is usually the primary here, but if the succession law of your primary title dictates that it should go to a character outside of your dynasty, you will instead keep playing as the dynasty here to your second, highest tier title, or third, fourth, etc. The situation is common when your player here is voted out under an elective succession law. So that's the thing. I don't think I'm going to get through all of this. We're, we're going to be taking things simple. Okay. Your title is represented. Okay, this I represent in your realm is set by a primary title. So this is our primary title all together. And there's one claimant which is the Kingdom of Ireland. Okay. The icon representing your realm is by a primary title which is the most important and prestigious title you will hold. If you click your character portrait, highlighted in the character view, the borders of your realm is lights up pretty much. Monster is our primary title, which is why your realm is named after it. You also hold the Earldom of Tormon, Tormon as a separate title. Ruling over others. As a ruler you can only hold so much land. On your own, as you will often have, rulers helping with administration of the realm by holding land which within your borders, making them your vassal. Okay. And there's our domain, there's our home key, and we can zoom in of course. Once close up, you will see the blue labels of the baronies that belong to us. The Earldom of Ormond is held by your vassal. So you are playing as one of many characters in this world, represented by an avatar. Your character is the ruler of a realm. You need to make sure that your character survives, and the dynasty survives really, and thrives throughout the ages. Your titles give you powers and controls over territories, etc. And they have skills indicating their proficiency within a certain field. Some are great talkers, while others prefer to make their clear intent on the battlefield. So there's diplomacy, uh, marshalship, stewardship, intrigue and learning. And we have we basically got to choose pretty much what we have to do. So character have traits and these traits then you know play over through the course of the game. They can affect our skills which are pretty much here and how they react of course. These are illustrated by icons in your character's views. Some traits will tell you about character's personality so uh, King Merchant McDonald, McDonald Chad, sorry I'll just call him Merchant. And he's wrathful, he's very quick to anger and fury, he's impatient and he thinks that most things should I ideally happen fast. That's pretty much me as well. And he's also a skilled tactician, a reliable commander, a fearsome warrior, renowned for his martial skill. So, like fickle, calm or generous, other traits are specific to know a character has lived a life, such as your education trait or commander traits. From this you can see that your character, character typically lives a modest life, but expects others to do so. Also, and it's quick to anger when they don't. And you know, distress, etc. Traits can also impact how other characters react to you. Some characters are impressed by a brave trait, while a lustful character is more likely to breach and salacious gossip. Traits influence other characters' morality and greed, which can affect both their friendly and hostile actions. All characters, yes, all have an opinion of one which drives their opinion. Low opinion is bad, and high opinion is good. And then some characters can do a murder scheme where you basically kill a target or fail for your or fall for your seduction scheme that aims to make the scheme targets one's lover. And there's a multitude of factors that determine this success chance, including opinion, trade compatibility and marriage status. And they can be secret of course. 
The way for the, to help you further your goals, you need gold, of course. Among the gold plays for buildings, armies and bribes. Collect it passively from your holdings and vassals as tax. Larger vassals and more important holdings tend to give more tax. However, money is not all. Certain things can only be achieved by spending the right amount of this is our, uh, prestige and religious matters, piety. Your prestige tells you how respected you are and it can be gained through titles, through marrying dynasties, fighting in war. Wherever you earn prestige, you build towards your next level of fame. And higher levels of fame make your, make your other characters think better of you and bring powerful ways to wage war. Some actions cost prestige, like declaring a war. These allow you to leverage your celebrity status for your own benefit, and the other characters won't think less of you for using them. Spending prestige does not affect your level of fame progress, just like your current prestige. And with a lot of piety, you know, if you're Catholic, you can have a lot of inter interaction with the Pope, etc. And you can have interaction, you know, with your head of faith. I think it's... Well, maybe I might be wrong, but I'm not sure. You have a level of devotion, learning skills, etc. And you can spend piety to declare holy wars. As well as traits, your character can pick a lifestyle. I pretty much focus on this part. But let's go and pick on a lifestyle. So I want him to do a martial realm. And I want him to have a strategic focus. So I'm going to select this one. Yeah, now I haven't selected focus, we can focus, move on to other people. So let's interact with other keys. Let's look at our player here, shall we? Alright, so what, what are the interactions available? Let's click. See the interactions available. Okay, so let's have a look. So let's go and send them a gift, first of all. Okay, well done. You have successfully increased somebody's opinion of you. Certain, yeah, you have certain opinion can last forever. Some like family bonds and others wane through over time. Like the fading memory of receiving a monetary gift. Now let's talk about your dynasty as the game goes on. Unless your character meets with an untimely accident, or terrible disease, they will grow old and eventually die. The story doesn't end there. It's only game over if you do not have an heir of your own dynasty. Alright, so if I even lose this game, I gotta make sure that my dynasty keeps surviving. Of course. As long as you are heirs of your dynasty, your legacy will live on. When your character dies, you simply start playing a new one, which is the player heir. So I could literally start successful and then I could literally, I could literally, you got the meaning. Depending on the type of succession your realm has, this is likely to be one of your children. Perhaps that one you groomed into the rule of a ruler. Your dynasty has its own coat of arms, which is currently highlighted and can be clicked for more information. I will look at this later. Succession laws. Succession laws determine how all titles and Resources are divided between the heads when a character dies. You currently only have one head. But let's take a look anyway. So, okay. okay. Let's have a look at our realm. So, shall we? So this is our realm. Have I not done this? And this is our dynasty tree. Tree. Sorry. Tree. Dynasty tree. Is it three or... Oh, I can't even say now. Three. Uh -huh. One, two, three. Yeah. Our dynasty tree. It's three. Tree. Anyway. Okay, so this is our hair. Oh, let's go back a bit. So where's our hair then? Okay, so this is our dynasty. And what is our succession laws? This is the to the dynasty hair. Which is me. And this is planning to me. Okay, so open the realm view on the right side of the screen. Aha. And let's inspect the succession tab. So I have renown shared by everyone in my dynasty. Renown goes up whenever anyone in the dynasty gets prestige and reflects how infamous or famous your family is rather 
Your family is rather than just you. Making significant strides in your renown will echo down the generations for your descendants, slowly increasing your level of splendor. As a dynasty head, the most powerful member of your dynasty, renown, will allow you to unlock dynasty legacies that will benefit all of you. Okay, so that's yeah, so to get, but okay. To ensure the future of a dynasty, you need family members. It helps if you're married, but we cannot prioritize or promise that you will marry for love. Click on our character. And I want to arrange... I want to find a spouse. Yes, alright, so let's, let's have a look. We can arrange a marriage or we can find a one. Find a spouse. Let's go for you. Greetings, Petty King, Merchant of Munster. I gladly accept your marriage proposal. You will be joined with my daughter, Shinoe. I'm sorry, I'm not good at pronouncing Irish names. So do forgive me for my butcherization in holy matrimony. May God grant you life, long life, and many children. Signed, Lord Penelin. Okay, so we've done this part. Many factors to consider. Yeah, 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 you... These factors you'll consider during your marriage, of course. And when you send the proposal, your marriage is done. Of course, that is brilliant. For this tutorial, we recommend that you find... Let's have a look. Let's find a spouse, shall we? Who is going to marry you? Mm. There's a French Castilian. There's a lot. But no. See, I don't. Ah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. What do I really want to have with the Anglo Saxons? In order to consolidate. Yes. May Saint Brigid bless their union. Countess Margaret. Yeah. Countess Margaret of Staffordshire. Excellent. Hey, I understand. Family is important. Yes, the fair hair comes from your dynasty. It won't hurt to keep an eye on your family and their line of succession. Depending on their succession laws, you might end up inheriting titles along with land and vassals from your relatives. Not everyone in your dynasty will be landowners, but every plot of land on the map has an owner. Sometimes the owner is you, sometimes one is the vassals, and sometimes it's another realm entirely. So most titles are structured, okay. So county, that makes me a count, but I have a kingdom, so I'm a king. Okay, each county is technically part of a duchy, each duchy is technically part of a kingdom, and each kingdom is technically technically part of an empire. So there's many dynamic names, etc. And your current ruler is in charge of a petty kingdom, so that leads us into the duchy. It here. But we are not barren, we're not a count yet. We won't see that the one. We won't see that yet. These characters are generally quite minor and unplayable. You do have one, the mayor of Innes. We say technically because as Crusader Kings <coughs> let you play with history, there is no way to guarantee that a king is actually in charge of all the titles that his kingdom is supposed to contain within his borders. We call this title hier hierarchy de jure. And these are a they're, they're considered as a as a holder of such a higher level title, has a coarsest belly that is required to declare war on another ruler, to seize control of his de jure constituent titles. For example, a duke might not actually control all of the de jure constituents, counties of the duchy, but that can declare war to seize them. Okay, so we're going to go to the change the, to the duchy map titles mode and change to the realms map mode. We did this part. The title of the monster consists of monster consists of three counties. Their names should be visible on the map. Thormund held by you, Desmond held by a neighboring ruler, and Norman held by a vassal. These counties are made up of smaller pieces of land called baronies. It's on this map level we find your holdings. So these holdings provide different levels of taxes for the building that you can construct a number. It is not very important that you what you build right now, but we suggest by upgrading the bastions and curtain wall.
So we're going to upgrade this one. Yes, it's going to take time, of course. That holder is Russell. So okay, this is how much tax we're going to get. An obligation can affect how high or low these taxes are given. Times of war will affect, of course, the control in a county, which in turn affects capital, which which affects taxes. As a ruler, you're likely to be liege of at least one vessel. Okay, so open the room. Let's have a look at our vessel. Okay, so the, our current vessel is Earl Rag, Ragnarvel Strixen of Ormond. Okay. And right now he has minus seven opinion of us. And we have to keep him happy. But how do we keep him happy? So... This gives out the schemes and factions against you. No matter how mighty or ruler your character is, if your realm unites against you either to depose you to war or just to murder you, your reign is bound to be cut short. Some of your vassals might serve on your council, making them and their opinion extra important. <coughs> As they will be trusted with council tasks. There is a limit to how many vassals you can comfortably be with, in charge of before your realm becomes unworthy. Going through this vassal limit affects taxes and levies provided to you. This doesn't matter for the tutorial, but when you start to build your own kingdom, be mindful of growing too fast. If you end up exceeding your vassal limit, you can grant lower title, lower ranking titles away to your vassals. Sometimes you can even create new tier vassals and titles to consolidate the power in an area. Your realm is the complete body of land and titles that you own, including the areas. Okay, you know, we can pretty much read this at this point. Okay, but you know, there's domain and there's land, etc. Note that there is a limit to how much land you can hold personally before you start incurring personalities. The domain limit. When you go above your domain limit, it can be a good idea to grant title and direction on characters you are friendly with, making them with your vassals. As you have no spare titles to give away, you cannot commonly do this, but you would otherwise find it in the character menu. Visible when clicking, right clicking on the character. Making a realm is a lot to work. As a ruler, you have the help of your council. These can be either vassals or members of your court, and they can act as your trusted advisors. There is one corresponding to each area of skill. Married rulers will have their spouse assistant with them. So, let's set them to work, shall we? Assist my ruler in the mm, court politics. Ah, yes, the schemes, of course. Intrigue. Let's look at our schemes. There is no hostile schemes right now. Yes, we're going to use a scheme and... But we can't do anything right now. We can't murder anybody, so we're not going to do that yet. So, let's look at our council. And let's look at our court. Yes, our court chaplain. Now I want to sway you. How do we use the sway scheme? Ah, I'm gonna sway. Yep, so we've done this. We've done this a sway scheme against a sway scheme against him. I've done it. Okay, excellent. Once that's in motion then the then you know pretty much does it. Okay, it depends on the success chance affected by diplomacy. And if you're unhappy, you can abandon, of course. Okay. Click the intrigue. Okay, there's our scheme. And we're going to do Sway Giacomo Alitia. Okay, that's done. And then we have the hooks and schemes. We can also blackmail, we can murder, we can... You know, I mean, in these medieval times. And hooks represent a favor you can call in with a particular character. So, do you, so we don't have any right now. Alright, so let's pretend that you have managed to get a hook on one of your vassals. Ah, oh, so we gained a favor hook on old Ragnarvel. This weak hook can be used for a number of things. One is to increase your obligation set by the feudal contract you have with a feudal vessel. Okay, so we can modify our, you know, 
Pure contract. Let's have a look what we can do with you. I want to sway you, of course. But there's, so there's a lot of options that you can do here. You can imprison, you can grant a title. Uh, can I grant anything? No, I can't. Okay, this is because when you have many into the character, okay. Alright. Oh yes, this is the part where I really... Alright, so let's have a look. Okay, so there's battles, there's our men at arms, and our knights. Um, but we can expand our army by employing men of arms. So let's create. Uh, okay, so when the war starts you can raise all your armies, of course. When the war's over you can disband your soldiers before starting another war. Okay. This other war you need a legitimate reason, of course it's belly. Uh, various ways to obtain one, uh, there's your titles, make you the rightful liege. Okay, you can pause of course. Okay, so right now we're not interested in this. Uh, holy war, we're not doing holy war yet. Okay, we although these are the most common, there are dozens of different types of, yeah, causes belly, different types of war. And we can, the easiest is of course fabricate and claim a country. This is something your court chaplain sees to through one of his counselor tasks. Ah, finally. This has been an exhausting title. Oh, well, an exhausting tutorial, but yeah. Okay, so. Yeah, first thing important to know there are five different speeds available. Press one to five, and you can pause for you. You pause the main menu, of course, when you wish to. And we'll start the game. Yes, army told to do with Mumbai, etc. Right, so let's remind your neighbor the Earl of Desmond, who is, who is rightful lead, truly is. If it happens to expand your realm, so be it. Declare war on Earl Murdoch of Desmond. Okay, select the name, declare war on the ruler of Desmond. Alright. Alright. But we have to declare war on the Earl of Desmond. How do you go around doing these things? How do you go around doing these things? There's our council, there's our court. I really want to invite some knights first. And I want to hoist a feast. Aha. Uh -huh. As for you. Yes, let us go in the clear wall. Yep, and I wanted to clear. Okay, so we're going to raise all armies. Okay, you've successfully declared a war. Next, you should rally your armies. A button has appeared at the bottom of the screen to help you, but you can do this from a military point of view. What is, where, wherever your rally point is, in this case, Stormont, let's go, that's where your army will gather. So let's raise all armies. Okay, next you you have to unpause the game. Let's unpause. The guests are gathered in the Great Hall. Lords and ladies from your from the near and far reaches of the realm. The mood is bright and spirits are high as the feast begins. Welcome, friends. With my marriage to Petty Queen, Shinoed, the realm expects us to throw a suitably extravagant wedding celebration. It is well within my right to collect a royal aid duty as part of this. But some may consider it tasteless to levy an extra attack. Mm, I'm gonna do. Yeah, I'm, I need I need more money. So let's understand. Right, we're not gonna do the army yet. Ah, the feast is on the way, and our guards are eating and drinking merrily. I cannot pronounce this, but Hon Hon. I just call you McDonald. Don. Approach the and then me at the great table. This is a marvelous feast, my lord. All my compliments to the host. 
Yes, I'm gonna give it to her. But the very first thing in my military that I want is a unit of bowmen. What right does Lorcan think he has to claim that my ideas of warfare are misguided? Claiming that my ideas would break down the moment combat is made. What does he know? Okay, so we're gonna upgrade this. And I want a unit of armor. Okay. Ah yes. Feast as my guest apart. With everyone headed for their respective homes, I am proud to say that the feast was a success. I have my wife Shinoet to think to thank much for of its success. And I feel nothing but gratitude as she sees the last few guests off. Okay. We're not gonna do anything, so we run race at this point. Okay. But I don't want to raise an army yet. Okay, to move your army, right click on the army on the map and right click on the area you want them to go. Right, so I want to move here. And perhaps the enemy capital barony. Okay, you can walk under this. So let's go and race. Now that your army is moving, of course, you can then do a siege. And battles automatically happen, of course, and the two armies cross their path. And sieges occur when you place your enemy, your army on an enemy holder. This is a good time to unpause the game if you haven't been done so. Otherwise, time to still Okay, fine. Your army is attacking the enemy holding. Click on the highlighted icon to see how it's going. Yeah, that's it. You need sieges to win most wars as they increase your war score. Whenever the siege, siege is won, it's pretty much occupied. Okay, so the color of the stripe shows who has occupied a holding. Since your color on the map is green, holdings that you have occupied have green stripes. A holding occupied by the Kingdom of France, however, would have blue stripes, etc. Alright, so let's... Yeah, let's... Uh, yes, yes, this is the Sunset Invasion. We're not doing the Sunset Invasion yet, we'll worry about it later. But let's, let's do this fast. Yeah, okay, so it goes for minus... Uh, okay, who is winning in the war? You can always look at the war score. And the war score here is pretty much us. Oh, we're, yeah, we're, we're winning. Yeah, we're, we're, I think we're at 100. Okay. All wars in the one way. Victory, white piece or defeat? We'll have to wait and see. White piece is, you know, possible peace offer. The, or we can have a victory, of course, which we annex the world. Or we can... We'll, we'll have defeated them, of course. Okay, so victory is ours. Now let's have a look at our end force demands. Let me rule it. Okay, let's offer peace. Surrender, white peace, or our end force demands. Yes. Ah, uh, yes, I have won a victory. Yes, 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 yes. Ah. Uh, so, we will do the Irish. Okay. To my liege, blessings upon you and your house. You are a much greater foe than I imagined. In order to put an end to this bloodshed, I will comply with your demands. Okay, Crusader Kings is about setting your own goals. If you want a suggestion, we recommend you try to become the King or Queen of Ireland. War is not the only way either. So be it. Okay, let's unpause. Ah, to the amicable petty King of Munster. I call upon you to honor our alliance and join me in the penitent claim on the Principality of Dihubut. Right, so... Petty, king or peasant, high or low, does not matter. We are all mortals. I was reminded of this as I awoke. Coughing in the early morning hours, a dull ache pounding through my head and throat. Uh, we'll do this. Yes, do what is necessary. 
Christina called upon the priest to bring forth the finest thing in the land. Oh, sorry, the finest thing in the court, which turned out to be a young child with a bright tenor voice. For several days in a row, the child sang me to sleep. The soothing voice turned out to be just what I needed. For now, the worst of my nightmares are alleviated, and the world seems a little brighter. Excellent work. Let's see who we can declare war with. Yeah, let's let's mod him, shall we? All right, let's do it, and let's play. Domna has decided that this time in Luminarch, I'm trying to pronounce the names, don't forgive me, has come to an end. The servants have packed his chest and he has said his farewell. But Domwell goes his claim on the Earl of Aelic. If I want to press him, make him my vassal, this is my last chance to make him stay. Give me one year and I'll press your claim. Okay. Let's have a look at our realm. Nope. What can I do with you? Let me send a gift. No, but I don't want to send too much. How's our console doing? Increase development in the county. Yep, so I want you to do that. Alright, so what can I do with you? You're, I want you to go foreign affairs. No. We need foreign affairs. No, we need domestic affairs. Yeah, we'll increase here. There's our spy master. I want you to disrupt scheme in... Okay. Okay, so all Ragnarvold is is pretty much I wanna declare one So he refuses our marriage. For core politics, I want you to also go for court entry. Oh, I lost a three. Right. Okay. As I awoke this morning and saw rays of shun sunshine falling through my window, it took me a moment to realize I had slept soundly for the first time in weeks. I did not wake up coughing once. I am glad to be well again. So we're not endorsed. The woman in charge of cleaning the clothes of all the diamonds guards is brought to me. No one will notice her tampering with their clothes, and if something distracting for the guards could be planted. What would you have of me, my lord? Yep, we'll do this. Aha, uh -huh, I can declare war on him. Uh, but my armies are raised. Yes, we'll do this later. I can change you to a high taxes or no, I want high here, but I want uh, I want high. No, we'll just do for here. We'll do low taxes here. 
but I want high levels here. Okay, so he wants a hmm. So I'll just sign you here. And okay, so this guy. And I want you to find a spouse. And I'll take you and I'll send a proposal here. And as for you, okay, I want to do you, I want to sway. And start scheme. And I also want to arrange a marriage. Christina, send proposal. And you want it, okay, I'll do. I'll make you the spy master then. You can ask your head of faith. Hey, I want to ask for gold. Okay. Greetings, petty king merchant of Munster. I have considered your plight and decided to grant your request. May these funds help you spread the true faith in your holy lands. Increase opinion. Let's start the scheme. Let's sway the Earl of Murdoch. Okay, now actually no, we won't know. How do I get, okay. Alright, let's unlock. Okay, so I want to, I think we pretty much gained everything. Let's unlock, one second. Ah, oh. Okay, but you know what? I think this has been a great episode and I will see you on the next one. I will continue more adventures. Don't forget to leave a like, share, comment and subscribe.